Today we're talking about how to make $100 a day with Airbnb. You don't need a lot of money to do this. In fact, you don't even need to own the house. This, this is my secret. This is how I was able to quit my job and have zero income to replace it with. This plus dividend income was how I was able to do probably the most irresponsible thing that I've ever done in my life, which was quit my job when I turned 30 to make videos online that nobody wanted to watch. And I had food, I had shelter for two years doing the exact same thing that I'm going to show you in this video. Please understand doing this is not going to make you wealthy, but if you follow the steps in this video, you watch it all the way through and you put in the hard work, you will easily make more than a dollar, you'll actually make even more than $100 a day. Now at my peak, I was earning roughly $1,200 per month, renting out a single room which paid for rent, so I was really happy. This isn't something I've really shared before on my channel, maybe because I always felt embarrassed about this and I was a super host on Airbnb, which is nothing to be embarrassed about, but I guess I just didn't want people to know that I cleaned other people's toilets. Never said it was gonna be glamorous though. Then one day, my friend Tyus asked me to teach him everything I know about Airbnb. So I did. And now he's making more than $100 a day renting out his garage that he converted into a small studio space and he has since far surpassed me. So today we're gonna go visit him and together I'm gonna show you and teach you everything we both know step by step and how we did it. You will not find any sales courses, there's no products I want you to buy, no newsletters I want you to sign up to at the end of this video. This is all 100% free as with all my videos. So if you found this helpful then you know what to do. Don't skip the ads or my dog and I will starve. <laughs> no kidding. I skip the ads all the time, so hi karma. But if you smash the like button, leave a comment, it'll help me out a lot. Let's begin. <laughs> so this is my friend Tyus. Hello. I guess we're gonna do the entire video like this? That's the plan, yeah. Okay, this is getting awkward. I didn't plan beyond this point. <laughs> Tyus, yeah. how much money are you making with Airbnb now? Uh, probably about $100 a night. Money's on the nightstand. Bro. <laughs> All right, Tyus, for real this time. Okay. How much money are you making? Like I said before, it's about $100 a night, but it, it varies depending on a, a lot of things. But I also got like cleaning fees and expenses. But you weren't always making this much from the start. No, I mean, the truth is there was a point in my life when I was living out of a car. There was a point where I was living in a barn. I mean, I feel really fortunate to be able to provide people with a place to live. It means a lot to me and to provide jobs and things like that. Is it enough to pay for the entire mortgage? Oh, way more over. Yeah. So on top of it being a moneymaker, like I get a free house out of the deal. That's amazing. Yeah, it's fantastic. In fact, I just had somebody book the place just now. It averages out to about $100 a day. Yeah, yeah, with some days being significantly more and some days being a lot less. Right, so the more people that actually stay here over two, you charge even more. I do, I charge a fee for each person over two uh, and I change my rates depending on the day of the week and the busyness within the year. So some days, for example, New Year's is super busy right. um, or holidays, things like that. You could charge people a kidney. Uh, and I do. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> Got a bunch of them over there. It's a little red fridge. <laughs> so now let's take a look at Tyus's Airbnb. This is my, my, my small, my humble, my lovely Airbnb. Glad to have you here. This is actually a door to the main house. So that's why it's password protected. If people come in, they can't get into the main house, but the rest is theirs. Bathroom. We added a bathroom. Keep in mind, this was a garage. So we had to tap into plumbing and make that all work. This is the garage door. It's wow. all encased in the Right there, wall. that entire wall. This whole wall, all the way down. So from the outside, it looks just like a garage. There's nothing for them to see. But uh, from the inside, people don't even realize that they're inside of the garage. Very few people ever figure it out. Um, so we put in a little living space um, with you know a little convertible coffee table that opens up for- uh, Nice. Yeah, for dining purposes. And, uh, and then the couches, I think it's a queen and there's two of them in here. And so that sleeps how many? The whole place sleeps six. Six, got it. Yeah, and we did that specifically because hotels can sleep four and we wanted to compete with hotels. And so the best way to do that was to offer things that hotels didn't offer. So sleeping six versus four, our win. Same thing with Put the Put a kitchen in. Yeah, hotel rooms don't have kitchenettes, do they? Well, some do. <laughs> uh, but we actually, I messed this up when I put it in. So I couldn't fit a fridge in here, a normal size fridge. 
And they say in theater, if you make a mistake, make it big. And so I decided to make the fridge red, bright red. <laughs> and that became like the accent piece for everything. So if you like the artwork on the wall, the pillows. Nice. Yeah, red became the accent color. Got another bed. Well, it's the only real bed. That's the, this is the actual bed. And then, like I said, the couches both become comfortable places. Wait, so that's another pullout couch? This is the exact same model. So that's another two people plus another two here. Yep. So it sleeps six. So it sleeps six. And then a little closet. We tried to put mirrors everywhere we could specifically because it makes everything look bigger and we're in a small space. Right. The whole place is like 400 square feet. So it's not a whole lot of room to work in. Tiny living. Tiny living, not exactly a tiny home, but it works. This was installed. This is part of the, of the building because there's a hidden water valve down here that I didn't want to take out of the garage. And so I, uh, so we built this around it so that nobody would notice it, but that if they wanted to, they could shut off the water to the whole house. There's a good trick about a TV in an Airbnb. <laughs> uh, the Roku's have a thing called like hotel mode, okay. a guest mode on them. So they can go on and it erases their user information when they log out. So they're not using your Netflix account. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Super useful. Love it. This is the place. This is home for a lot of people every year. So obviously Tyus put some money into his Airbnb, but you do not need to do that. Case in point, I didn't. I bought a $260 futon from Amazon that converted into about a queen sized bed that slept too, because I wanted to have four people stay with me. And you can have a lot more bookings if you have four people or more. You can even charge more money for people after two. And if you can get six people to stay with you, you can charge far more and you'll even be competing with hotels. Because large groups of people travel through cities, they want to stay together and split their stay. And you can't do that with a standard hotel room. Pro tip, instead of buying a traditional wood slat style bed, don't do that. I learned the hard way. People will absolutely break that. So instead, I spent around $100 on Amazon to get this steel underframe where you can actually put your mattress on top of. And if you want to complete the look, you can order a separate headboard from Amazon and it just gets a nice finished look, but that thing is unbreakable. So between that, the desk, the rug, the towels, and all the little other miscellaneous items, the total came out to be around $650, which is nothing compared to the amount of money that you're about to make. So Tyus, important question. What did you do at first to get that first booking? Because that's literally the hardest part. I didn't really do anything besides- Did you advertise? I put or? a listing up on Airbnb's website. But you didn't advertise? You didn't pay anybody to advertise? No, okay. zero. Nothing. And then just people came. I took some photos of the place and I put the listing up. Now over time, you can become like a super host right. and then that boosts your listings. But no, at the beginning, there's literally zero in advertising. I remember one of the things I did when I first started, I was like, oh, I got to go super low. So I charged people like $30 a night, which was super competitive. And that's how you get those first few bookings. And then once you get a few reviews, then I up the price. Reviews is a good trick. Yeah. Like making sure you get really great reviews and there's a lot of sneaky techniques on getting those. Okay, so the room that I offered people was nowhere near as cool as Tyus's place, but I've got a few tricks up my sleeves, even though I'm not wearing any sleeves. These are so sneaky, so please use your powers for good. Now, when I listed my space, I made sure to decorate my place with very light and bright colors like bright yellow, bright blue, and almost feminine because I knew that that would attract both men and women. When I made my profile picture, I made sure to pose with my girlfriend because I wanted to telegraph the fact that I'm not a single guy. And this is especially important if I'm a single traveler, especially if I'm a girl. I would not want to book with this guy. Even though he looks good, he looks like he's single and ready to mingle, and I'm not about to stay at that dude's man cave because Airbnb is not that kind of place. You are there to provide a service, a comfortable place to stay that's safe. So make sure you're not a loner, so borrow a friend or a family member and actually follow through with this advice and use this tip for good. The second thing I did was I made a video showing off the entire room. I made it very bright and inviting, and that really separated me from the rest of the listings because I went the extra mile to show off that the room was clean, safe, and it was actually a good value. If you don't have anything to do this with, then borrow somebody's iPhone 11 because it has an amazing wide angle lens camera and video capabilities far better than what I had at the time, which was a 5D Mark II. Slap some spicy music on that and spicy meatball. Are there any quick tips you can give people when they get started? For me, it's really big to not have to do work. So right. after That's you've fair. invested a lot, yeah. you try and make get your hands off of it. Okay. And so one of those things is I got somebody else to handle cleaning and all of that, but then I also automated the place. Okay. So for example, the door lock. Uh, I didn't want to have one code on it. Then 
anybody who rents the place could come back in when somebody else was right, here. Right, right. So I have an automated door lock that pulls my Airbnb information and finds out what their phone number is and programs it to their phone number. And the software is called uh, Our Boy. It's a hundred bucks a year or a hundred bucks for a lifetime of having it, but it does all the work. So you automated your lock. What else did you automate here? So lighting, power. So you literally never see the people that come in? Never. That's amazing. I mean, I have camera systems on the outside of the house. Right. So I, I know when the cars approach. Right. And it gives me alerts. So when the door opens, like it literally tells me, hey, they're here or they're not here. And you just send them instructions how they can check in and it's customized individually to each person that books. Yes, but that's automated too. So right. even the emails that go out, the text messages that go out to them, all of that's automated. I have a pre-recorded video that shows them the place wow. and that gets sent out. And is that through Airbnb or is that a separate service? Creating a video is just right. shooting a video. But um, that message, that initial message? So it's a, just a text and I sent a hyperlink to the to the private message on it. As soon as you get the booking, how does it send the initial text? So there's a bunch of services out there that will automatically, they can manage multiple listings, but they will send text messages back and forth to clients for you. Okay. And they will leave reviews for you automatically too. Really? So you don't have to go on and leave a review of the people that stayed there. They'll do it for you. So I love Tyus's approach to making everything hands off and more passive, but I didn't have that kind of luxury because I didn't have that kind of money to invest. So I had to put in more time, which is okay because I discovered that the three things people value the most are location, cleanliness, and safety. So do your best in the description of the Airbnb listing to really describe everything that makes your place stand out. So include all the locations that are nearby and they don't even have to be that cool. It could be the gas station or the grocery store that they could literally walk to and people love that kind of stuff. If you're talking about safety, then talk about all the privacy that they'll get. They'll have their own key to their own room that you won't have access to. And above all, just keep their room clean and make sure to keep the hair off the floor because that's one of the first few things that they will notice. Is there anything to watch out for when you first get started or something that you should know that people miss? There's tons of stuff that you're probably gonna miss in doing this. Like there's- Well, that's not intimidating. <laughs> the truth is you have to just do it. You have to jump in to find out what those things are. So for, sure. for me, when I needed to build this, I didn't even know the plans of my house. So I had to go to the county and ask them to give me the Like plans. a blueprint of how your house was built? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know how it was made and they, they keep that on file. And then while I was there, I learned that technically if you have a stove, in your place, it becomes a separate unit. You have to have a different address for it. If you have a stove. Yeah. So my kitchen has no stove, it has a, a hot plate. So an electrical one. Yeah, right. specifically to avoid that. That's interesting. Or for example, where I live, if you've got two doors that face the street, apparently that can create confusion and you're not allowed to do that. So I had to change the way I had the doors planned out. Wow, that's interesting. So then you went to the courthouse, you got the plans, and then did you run across any issues when you were building it out? Really, if you're going back and forth with them with the permitting process and your builder, your builder will know a lot about this stuff. Which you absolutely should have permits. Yeah, if you're going this route, if you're going the expensive route, the last thing you wanna do is get it all shut down. Yeah. Yeah, but it can be very, it can be expensive. It can be a long process. It can be a bummer. You also wanna to touch base with like an HOA if you've got one or any of those. Yeah and I'll leave a link in the description below the video. I'll show you a map where you can plug in your address and it'll show you like areas where it's allowed and where it's not allowed. I also wanna add that you technically don't need to own your house, but at that point it would be considered subleasing. So I would definitely check with your landlord if that's something that you can do. Get permission first and make sure to look at the regulations of the city to make sure that you can actually do this in the first place. So I will leave that in the link below where you can check the map. Do you have any words of encouragement or advice for people when they get started? I would say first to make sure that you start as quickly as possible. You're get, you're gonna make mistakes, that's gonna happen. So you might as well get those mistakes over with as fast as you can. And also try your very best to figure out a way where you're not creating a job for yourself, but you're making a way for you to actually have passive income. And the only way you're gonna do that is if you can make money while you sleep. So focus on how do I make this so I don't have to work. Get it on something else, get it automated, get employees, whatever that's gonna take. Uh, but it's seriously worth it. Imagine living a life that's truly free uh, and where now suddenly the big question is what are you gonna do with your time? Right. That's really empowering. If you could go back in time and tell yourself or do anything differently with your Airbnb experience, is there anything you would do differently? Uh, I would have done it earlier. I would have done it faster. Okay, that's earlier pretty, and faster. Pretty happy with everything else. No, yeah, it's amazing how you converted this garage into this and it's, you didn't spend that much money, but you don't have to go that route. No. You don't. If you have an extra room in your house, you can do it right now. Now I had the worst first experience with my Airbnb because the guy that stayed with me didn't speak English. I couldn't communicate with him and he trashed my place. So I told myself, 
never again. Airbnb just wrote it off, not worth it. But lucky for me, I tried one more time and it's awesome that I did because I got to meet some pretty cool people all around the world that stayed with me. I got Cuban coffee. I had some people make some Indian food for me and I even made a friend, which is super cool. Also pro tip, meet the people that you host face to face. I've noticed that the people that I meet and the people that I introduce myself to have always left my house cleaner than the people I didn't meet at all who treated my place more like a hotel and left it a little dirtier. I think when people see each other face to face, they notice, hey, this is actually somebody's house and they give it a little bit more respect. So I wanted to experiment with a new video series about how to make $100 a day trying different side hustles. Airbnb was my first, but maybe I could try Uber or Postmates next, or maybe OnlyFans. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'd make Corey do it and then we'd split the profit. But if you have any ideas for me, let me know in the comments down below and make sure to register with Webull. This is their last month. They're giving away two free stocks. That's one free stock for registering. And if you fund your account $100, you get a second free stock valued up to $1,400. You get a third free stock from Robinhood. Follow me on Instagram. I post from time to time. Join my free Discord group. We talk about investing. Love you. You are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay positive, and I will see you back here on Monday and Friday. Bye-bye.